Welcome. This is my second video of the Conquest of Alexander scenario from Civilization VI. In my first video, I uh, beat the scenario on Deity in 37 turns, but I didn't realize until I consulted some other videos that to achieve a perfect score of 200, you have to settle 11 cities, 12 actually, as well as capturing all the Persian cities and city-states in 37 turns. So I did some more practicing and made this video here. I'm going to walk you through it, show you how I did it. Not only did I achieve the perfect score of 200, I actually went one further and got 205. And I did it on the 34th turn rather than 37th turn. If you use your turns properly, you can capture the first two cities in two turns, Athens and Sparta by dividing your units up appropriately. And I use my settler to settle a city right here and build an encampment close to the road to try to get production rolling right away. It's really important to build up your unit's experience as quick as possible so you can get one of your units to the four promotions so they have two attacks per turn. I try to get a Hataroi, the cavalry unit, to two attacks per turn as fast as possible by having the same one keep conquering cities because you get a plus 10 experience points every time you do that. It's really important to build your encampments on a road or close to a road so that your units can get onto the road as soon as possible. Using the road makes your movement much more efficient. You need to have Alexander, who's your great general, right next to the city of Athens when you take it over so that you get the two hoplite units. Any city that has a world wonder in it will give you a unit when you put Alexander next to it. I don't use him for them all because it doesn't work with uh, the path that I take, but uh, any, there's a few that it's really important that he's next to to get those units. I use the cities of Pela, Athens, and Chalkidiki as production cities. The other Persian cities don't work as production cities because they don't grow at all. So there's no point in building a granary in them. And you just basically make sure your encampment is there and you use encampment training to build up gold in the other Persian cities. And then I use these three cities here to produce what I need. And I start off building military units, the Hypaspists and the Hetairois, and then I switch to settlers later on. I always build one galley in Athens to protect against Persian galley attacks after I complete my encampment there. It's essential that you use your great general Alexander to move your troops quicker. He gives three bonus movement points in each turn to each troop that is within two spaces at the start of the turn. So you'll see how I always end the turn with Alexander as close to two tiles away from as many troops as possible so that I can keep the cluster moving across the map. Otherwise you'll never get there in time. If a unit needs a promotion, I try to move them further down the road and use the promotion and I use the units that are weak or need a promotion to defeat the enemy units. Now you only get great general points from your Hypapists and Hatyroids. So you use your archers and catapults and hoplites to weaken the enemy units and then finish them off with the Hypaspists or Hatyroids. You'll see me taking a lot of time to work out exactly which unit to use where because you have to do them in the right order to maximize the efficiency of movement so you can move this cluster across the board to capture all the enemy cities in time. So not only are you trying to move your cluster across the board but you're also trying to collect great general points and you're also trying to boost your experience points to get more promotions 
and especially trying to get one of those Hatairois to two attacks per turn as soon as possible. It's also really important that before any of your units attack that Alexander is within two tiles of that unit because he gives them a boost of 15 combat strength. Now if any of your Hatairois are within one tile of a great general or Alexander, they get an additional plus five combat strength which makes them very deadly. I like to build a catapult in Pella and an archer in Chalkadiki to get some more military strength off the start. You'll need it once you get down in the southeast a little more. You may also notice that your range units and siege units won't be able to fire if they're low on movement points on a unit, but if you move your great general within two tiles of that unit, then they will be able to fire. So this is really important uh, for range and siege units. I was forced to move this one hoplite back to Athens because there's a Persian galley approaching and if I leave that city vacant, that galley uh, will possibly retake that city which will cause a huge problem for me. I have to wait until the galley is built to protect it. Next I'll start building more hypaspists in Pela and Chalkadiki and Athens before I move to Hetairois because the hypaspists have less movement points and it takes them a long time to get over to join the rest of the army. Plus I'm going to use them to take out Halicarnassus which I'm going to bypass with my main army. You'll notice how important it was that I moved the hoplite back to Athens because the Persian galley attacked and if I hadn't had that hoplite there it would have reduced Athens to very low defense strength and probably would have been taken over next turn. So now I move on to the Persian city of Gordian. I take my advance units of the Hatairoi and the Hypaspis and get them in position but I don't attack yet because I want to wait till Alexander is moved up so they get the bonus. And this is the strategy I use every turn. I pick a goal that I want to achieve for that turn whether it's a city or a unit and I move my troops into position. I position my great general and then I attack. So here I'm calculating if I have enough movement points left with Alexander to move him forward to give the combat strength bonus to the Hatairoi and then back so they give the movement point strengths to the rest of my unit that's falling behind. I have to keep that hoplite in Athens until that galley is built so that the uh, Persian galley doesn't take it over. Next I'm moving on to the Persian city of Tarsus which is usually very easy to take over using the Hatairois and one catapult uh, you can usually take it over in one turn and trying to build up that experience points for those Hatairois. I made a small mistake there, moving that one Hatairoi into position. I thought it had enough movement points to take the city, but it didn't because he wasn't close to Alexander, so he only had four movement points at the start of the turn. There's many things to keep track of. It's really important to keep your cluster, your, your main army moving, keep them on the road as much as possible, and then always finish the turn with Alexander next to as many units as possible. Like I said before, all these Persian cities, they really don't grow, so I don't use them to build anything except for they need an encampment, and then I use them to do encampment training, and that builds up gold for which you're going to buy units and settlers later on. 
The Persian horsemen are tough. They uh, are the toughest units you'll face, except for the elephants over in India. But uh, that's where these hoplites really come in handy. And often it'll take an archer, a hoplite, and then one of your hetairois or hypaspis to finish them off. You want to try and play the whole game without losing a single unit if you can. And you'll do this by staggering your up upgrades, your promotions, and by using farms to pillage to boost your health. And you want to keep your mo army moving, but you want to keep them healthy so you don't lose anybody. Nobody falls behind and nobody dies. At this point, my main focus is to get enough great general points to get that first great general besides Alexander, which you're going to use to support your second army, which you're building and is going to take out Helicarnassus shortly. Okay, so here's my second army starting. I've got an archer and a hypaspis. I'm going to need a siege tower that I'm going to build in Pela, and another hypaspis, and that should be enough to take out Helicarnassus. Now that I've built my galley in Athens, I can move that hoplite out and he can come join the second army. Because Athens is further down the road, I'm going to switch straight to Hyteroids there because they move faster along the road than hypaspis do. Next, my main army is going to move south to Thapsacus, or whatever it's called, and uh, it should be pretty easy to take out before moving east. So at the end of the turn, it's really important to cluster all your units around Alexander so they're within two tiles so that they all get the three bonus movement points at the start of the next turn.
Next, my main army is going to move east to Arbela. We have to take out this city so that the encampment that's north of it is seized so that the road becomes clear, otherwise you can't move your units down that road. You also want to be very careful that you never move Alexander within one tile of an enemy unit or a city because then you enter their zone of control and he loses all his movement points. You want to keep him free to move around for the whole turn. While it might be tempting to go kill units that are uh, to the west and to the south, you want to keep your move army moving forward, which I mean east, and so you just want to leave those units straggling around. It's okay, they're not going to take over your city. I didn't quite take it that turn because the horseman in the city is providing it with strong defense strength. Um, but I'll take it next turn. Now regarding Halicarnassus, you really don't want to move your units into position until you have that siege tower because of the walls will bombard you and reduce your strength. Now I start building Hatyroids in Pela, Athens, and Chalkidiki. And then I'll start building settlers later on once I have a good second army built up. So before you take over an enemy city, you want to look around for weak units that you have that you can pillage farms with to boost their strength, because once you take over the city, you can't pillage those farms anymore. So at this point, I just need to kill one more unit with a Hatyroi or Hypaspis, and then I get my first great general besides Alexander. And you can see this Hatyroi is going to get its third promotion, so it's super close to getting that fourth promotion with the two attacks per turn. So I finally got my great general, and then I'm going to use him to move that siege tower 
a lot faster along with the hoplite down to join the second army and we'll start working on Halicarnassus. Whenever you take a city that has a world wonder in it, it automatically heals all your units across the board. So you want to use these cities strategically. So when your first army, your lead army, is out east attacking a really tough defended city, you can have them attack a bunch of units and leave them weak, and then you use your second army to take over a city with a world wonder in it, and then it automatically heals them all. And this really allows you to take over those tough cities and move quicker across the board. Because Pela and Chalkadiki are my two main production cities, any builders that I come across, I send them back there to build more mines and try to boost the production in those cities. Now my main army is going to move east to Hagmatana. I'm going to bypass. Babylon and Susa, and I'm going to leave those for my second army. Because this is a narrow, narrow passageway along the mountains and the roadway, you really have to be careful about how you move your units in here, and you want to keep enemy units off the road, so you got to eliminate them right away. You really don't want to get bogged down in this part of the map because you can lose two or three or four turns quite easily if enemy units start plugging up the road. As you can see, I made some small mistakes in terms of movement that probably could have saved me maybe one turn when it's all said and done. I didn't make any really costly mistakes throughout the entire game though, and that's why I'm pretty happy with it. It's the best I've ever done in this scenario. But uh, I'm sure you could do it in 32, 31 turns if you uh, and still get achieve a 205 score, but it would require a pretty much perfect play. You really want to make sure you build up your second army as much as possible. Uh, there's been times I've played this and I haven't had enough strength in the second army and it costs you in the end game.
Next I have my main army heading southeast to Inpahan. And this is a very narrow passageway and you gotta be really careful about how you maneuver your troops to try and get them there as quick as possible and seize that city. At this point is when I start to divide my main army into Army 1B, I guess you could call it. And they're going to head north to Ray. They're eventually going to join up, back up with the rest of the first army, but it's not going to be till the end of the game. Alright, now we can start attacking Halicarnassus. So we're going to move our siege tower into place. Siege tower needs to be right adjacent to the city, and then any melee units uh, adjacent to the city will then be able to attack the full, full defenses of the city without the walls protecting them. I'm not going to need the hoplite here, so I'll just keep moving him down the road. And I will actually be able to use the galley as an attack unit here on Halicarnassus. At this point, I always buy a siege tower for my first army because I'm going to need it in a city that's coming up there have city walls defending it so now I have two Hatiroids with three promotions and they're both going to be at fourth promotion shortly and they'll each have two attacks per turn, so I'm going to keep one with my main army, and one's going to break off with Army 1B and go north. Now you want to be careful with this Army 1B that you're taking north. They're going to be fairly weak, and you don't want to start attacking cities without a great general. So you're just going to kind of hang back and wait with them, killing units until you get that great general up there. Now, like I said, any city with a world wonder, once you take it over, it'll heal all your units. So before I do that, I always check around the board and make sure that all my units have attacked and are in a weakened state to maximize this uh, strategy. I use the same strategy with my second army as I do with my first army. I keep the units clustered around my great general so that he always finishes the turn within two tiles of as many units as possible so that they get the two movement benefit and then I always make sure the great generals within two tiles of other units when they go to attack except for the Hatiroids you want to have them one unit, one tile away so that they get the plus five bonus of the great general as well. Now at this point I start building settlers in Pela, Athens and Chalkidiki. I have places that I've 
selected that I'm going to build new cities in that I've worked out over several courses playing this scenario. Now my main army is moving south towards Parsa. This is one of the tougher cities to take, especially if you try to take it from Susa. That's why I always go to Imbraham, or whatever it's called, and then move south to Parsa. On the road, it's much easier because you get to avoid the encampment, which is uh, armed. So you're really trying to get your siege tower right next to the city, and you're trying to get your catapult within two tiles on the road. And then once you do that, it's just a matter of getting your Hypaspis next to the siege tower and your Hytyroids close to the city, and then it's lights out for Parsa. So at this point I'm going to move my great general up to join army 1B so that they can start moving northeast. And soon I'll have another great general that can rejoin the second army. But they'll be okay until then. So once your great general is in a city you can then transfer him directly to another city and they'll have to rest for a turn but uh, that's a very handy for moving them from one side of the map to the other. Now that my great general's in place, I can start working on trying to take the city of Ray here. But I still don't have enough units there to do it. I'm going to need more of the first army to come up and join them before I can really take the city of Ray. So to take the city of Parsa here, i got to move my siege tower adjacent to the city with the Hypaspist. Then I move the catapult within two tiles. My Hetairois, I'm going to move them around. And then you'll see the short work it makes of this city and its walls.
So the city of Parsa has a world wonder, so once I take it over, all my units are going to heal. So I'm going to make sure all my other units attack and use up their strength uh, so that they can be healed once that city gets taken over. Now you want to make sure that your great general Alexander is right next to the city of Parsa because when you take it over you'll get two immortals which become very useful later on. So now I'm going to keep moving my main army east and I'm going to send a few troops up to join army 1B and take out Ray. I won't be needing the siege tower anymore but I will need it in the north so I'm going to send it to join army 1B. Immortals are useful because they're a melee unit that can also act as a range unit. So they come in handy because you can attack units without losing any strength, but when you need them to, they can also act as melee units. Now the settlers issue is tricky. Every settler you build increases the cost of all future settlers. So you want to be very careful about how you do it. You just don't want to start buying a bunch of settlers. So I, I use Athens, Pela, and Chalkadiki to build settlers and I send them out as far as they can go at first, leaving the spaces that are close to fill in later. Now it's taken a long time for my army 1B here to take Ray, but that's okay, you have to be patient and uh, and they're still building up experience and once they all get together they'll start moving faster. I want to keep my first army here moving east down the road. Alright, finally my Hitairoi has reached its fourth promotion. It now has two attacks per turn. That's going to really help it to uh, take over more cities quicker.
And now that I've got another great general, they can join up with the second army that is going to start taking out cities in the southwest. Like Army 1B, you want to be very patient with the second army. It's weak, it's going to come under some heavy fire, and you just want to slowly move. You'll have plenty of time if you do it right and you're patient. So now that you have a great general with each of your armies, you're really not that focused on collecting great general points and more about collecting experience points. So that governs who I'm going to use to kill enemy units at this point. Alright, so once your main army with Alexander has taken the city of Pyrrha, we're going to head straight north to the city of Abanca, and then we're going to head east through the mountain pass.
Army 1B is going to keep heading northeast. These cities are pretty easy to take. You just got to keep moving your army along the road and none of them put up much of a fight. My second Hatairoi has reached its fourth promotion and now it'll have two attacks per turn. And this can help this army a great deal. Now you can see that except for that siege tower at the beginning of the game, I haven't bought a single unit yet. I've been using the same units, except for the ones that I've built uh, from Pela and Athens and Chalkidiki. And I'm saving all my money to build settlers, to buy settlers at the end of the game. Also up to this point, I have not lost a unit in combat, and I can't remember if I end up losing one or not, but it's really important that you keep them going because they continue to develop experience points and they get tougher and tougher as the game goes on. Alright, now my second army is moving southwest to the city of Tyre, and uh, it's got city walls, so you're going to have to use a siege tower here to uh, get through those city walls. So like I said, these cities are pretty weak. You just got to move your catapult into place, bombard it, and then move in with your melee units and they should uh, fall fairly quickly. Now you can see on the map on the bottom left hand corner of the screen that I'm just creating an orange ribbon right through the middle of the Persian Empire and uh, my main army with Alexander is going to move up north and then over to the far east and army 1B is going to move up the northeast and army 2 is going to move to the southwest. Now these settlers that I'm building, the earliest ones you have to move as far away as possible because you're not going to have time to move the later ones that you build uh, to build, form cities in time because cities have to be built four tiles apart and you've only got so many spaces you can make them. Now you should start making some ground with the second army. Once you get the siege tower adjacent to the city of Tyre, it's just a matter of knocking it down with your Hypaspis and Hetaris. Then you can start moving further southwest.
Meanwhile, Army 1B continues to move northeast. And you just keep moving along the road and keeping your army clustered around your great general. Now with our first army in Alexander, we're going to head north to the city of Abanka, and then we're going to go straight east towards the city of Patala through the mountain pass. At this point, I'm going to buy a catapult to supplement my first army with Alexander because we're going to need it when we get to the city of Patala that can have some pretty heavy defenses. Now the second army should finish taking the city of Tyre here. Then the second army will move southwest to the city of Gaza. This has also has city walls, so you'll need the siege tower and it also has an encampment that you have to watch out for so you can't just leave your units hanging out there they can get killed really quick Now I'm finally using a settler to found a new city. And most of the settlers from here on out, I'll be building cities closer to the home base, Tapella. Now if the Persian army starts to clog up your road, you just have to take out the units one at a time. Like you just have to be patient and take them out. 
you uh, use a range or a siege unit to weaken the unit and then finish them off with the Hitaroids or the Hypaspists. So what to do with this latest great general? Well, the second army, as soon as we take the next city, is going to break into two. And half of it is going to continue on in the southwest towards Giza. And the other half is going to move back towards Babylon. So we're going to keep one great general with the army moving towards Giza. And then army 2B is going to move towards Babylon with the new great general. Okay, I got some very weak units here, and they're both very experienced, and I don't want to lose them. So I'm going to try and kill some guys and see if I can get them a promotion. Otherwise, I'm going to have to wait until the second army takes the city of Memphis that is a world wonder of the pyramids, and will heal all my units. Okay, well, I was able to kill that guy, but I didn't get a promotion, so now he's even weaker than he was before. So I really got to be careful with this Hitaroi. I worked hard to get him to four promotions, and I can't lose that guy. Oh boy, and now he didn't kill that archer, so now he's even weaker than he was before. He may die. You have to be very careful with the city of Patala in the Far East. In case you didn't know, this is where Alexander was when he died in real life. But these war elephants are very difficult to kill. You'll see how they try to kill one. Now you can see that the city is unprotected. Now it doesn't have walls, so it doesn't look that tough, but uh, if there's an elephant in the city, it is nearly impossible to take it uh, without a lot of siege units. So we gotta try and get there as quick as possible and try to take it over before they get there.
At this point, part of the second army is going to break off and head back towards Babylon. Babylon is pretty heavily defended, so you have to be patient until you build up some troops. The rest of the second army keeps heading southwest towards Memphis. These two cities down here are pretty easy to take. Now I'm figuring out where to put this settler. And I look, I've got three settlers coming from Athens, Pela, and uh, Chalkadiki. And I'm going to put one here, right by Chalkadiki and then one up here in the top corner, and then one here along the mountains. So this settler I have here, I'm going to push it way farther east uh, before I build those other three. And the second settler I'm going to have to find a place for over in the east as well. Well, I was very fortunate that that Hetairoi survived through that turn. I want to be very careful with him now. However, even though I've killed that archer, I did still did not get another promotion. The more experience they get, the harder it is to get promotion. Alright, so we've gotten lucky here, and the city of Patala is unoccupied. There are no war elephants in the city, meaning we have to try and damage it as quickly as possible, because once a war elephant gets in the city, it's very hard to weaken the city defenses. This is worth doing, even if you risk losing a unit. Because once the war elephants come to attack, they may kill one of my Hitaroi or Hypaspis who are waiting in the front by the... That's why you want to keep them on the other side of the river there. Alright, so unfortunately I didn't quite take the city of Patala, but I did weaken it almost to the point of it being done for. So I just gotta survive to the next turn and then I should be able to take it, even if there is a war elephant in the city. Now my army 2B is gonna slowly move towards Babylon, but you gotta be patient. Meanwhile, the rest of the second army is moving towards Memphis, which is undefended and should be fairly easy to take. And once I take that city, it'll heal all my other units across the map.
Alright, so now Patala has a war elephant in the city, but it's too late for them. One shot from my Hippaspist, and it's gonna be finished. I made a mistake there. Uh, I should have put Alexander right next to the city, and I would have got one of those war elephants to join me in my army. Now at this point, I really only need a couple of units to head north uh, with the rest of the first army to take out those top two cities up there. I'm going to send Alexander and the Hetaroys and the Catapult back northwest to join up with the rest of Army 1B. I really need to take the city of Memphis here to heal my other units so the army up in the northeast can keep moving forward. So before I take the city of Memphis, I want to check around and make sure all my units uh, do some attacking. Now I'm keeping an eye on the settler production in those first three cities because I don't want to buy any settlers until they're finished producing, otherwise it'll take them longer to finish. So I'm waiting for those to finish and then I'll buy more settlers.
The northeast corner of the map has a lot of units waiting for you, and it's a real meat grinder trying to get your troops through there. Just gotta be patient and take them down one at a time. A lot of them will die attacking your troops, so you just gotta go slow and don't expose any weak units. I'm going to use these three units to head north and take these last two cities in the top corner. I'm going to use these two Hataroys to finish off the last city down the bottom here. And then I'm going to send this Hypaspis back to rejoin the rest of the second army and taking on Babylon. Once Pela finishes this last settler, then you can switch it to encampment training and build up gold. Now Alexander and these three units are finally going to rejoin with the rest of the first army and they're going to head in to the top of the northeast.
The second army starts moving in towards Babylon.
So Babylon has a world wonder, so before I take it, I want to make sure that all my units get some attacking in, because they're all going to be healed as soon as I capture Babylon. Okay, well I thought I was going to take Babylon, so that was a pretty significant mistake, and I've left a lot of my units exposed in the northeast. Miraculously, none of my units died. At this point, you want to start keeping track of your score, making sure you've built enough cities to get the 200 points.
Now my second army can move towards Susa and their job will be finished. Now that my final settler has been built, I can start to spend all this gold on settlers. There's a few cities around the map that have lots of wide open spaces. It really doesn't matter where you build them at this point, just as long as you build as many cities as possible. Now you want to put some of your extra great generals next to settlers because then they'll allow them to move enough spaces in one turn to build a city because at this point in the game turns become really important.
So you really need Alexander up here for these last two cities because they're both tough. And uh, he can position himself in the middle so he can lend his combat strength to both cities. So everything's set up so that I could end the game next turn. The only problem is I haven't built enough cities yet, so I'm still waiting on settlers, and I should get enough gold next turn to build another settler.
So I'm going to move Alexander down to the city so that I can build a settler and then move him and build a city in one turn. So I could have ended the game on this turn and I would have had 200 points and uh, finished it on turn 33. I decided to build one more settler and wait one more turn so I can get the score of 205 and finish on turn 34. Okay, so you can see that I achieved the score of 205, Alexander the Demonstrably Great, and did it on turn 34. However, I noticed in my Hall of Fame rankings that it would always give me five points less in the score that it has in there. So I kept getting 195 whenever I'd get a 200 score. So I had to go to 205 to get my Hall of Fame score to say 200. And it says there that I did it in 33 turns because I didn't use up the 34th turn, I guess. Anyway, I hope this can help you uh, when you try and beat this scenario. And I'd like to see somebody try and beat the score and the... Uh, amount of turns I did it in so I can have to try and do it again.